concurrency control techniques what do we mean by concurrency control techniques locking techniques for concurrency control time stamping protocols in concurrency control of database management system in various transactions hello everyone i am sukanya from go edu hub technologies and in this video we are going to discuss about concurrency control techniques so what do we mean by a concurrency control it is actually a method of managing the concurrent operation on a database without getting any obstruction with the other problems of concurrency are any lost update occur when multiple transactions select the same row and update the row based on the value selected uncommitted dependency issues also lead to concurrency and various problems related to that sometimes non repeated read occurs when a second transaction is trying to access the same row several times and read the different data at each time incorrect summary issues also lead to problems in concurrency of a database and data item now what is the need for concurrency control why do we need control of concurrency to apply the isolation through the mutual exclusion between the conflicting transaction to resolve the read write and write write conflict issues going in two separate transactions or in a same transaction to prevent database consistency because consistency is most important feature of any database management system and constantly preserving execution obstructions also the system needs to control the interaction among the concurrent transaction this control is achieved using the concurrent control schemes concurrent control helps to ensure the serializability which we have discussed in our previous videos also now concurrency control protocols there are four types of protocols those are log based two phase time stamp and validation based protocol the very first is log based protocol in log based protocols a log is a variable associated with data item that describes the status of data item with respect to the possible operation that can be applied to it now in log based protocol there are certain keywords which are shared log it is also known as read only log it can only access the user for reading purpose not for writing that means updations or changes cannot be made or insertion even as the name suggests it can shared between two transaction because while holding this log the transaction does not have the permission to update the data set or on the any particular data item s log or shared log is requested using log s instruction exclusive log data item can both read and write as well this exclusive can only held simultaneously on same data set x log is requested with the help of x log instruction Simplicity lock protocol is a lock based protocol allow transaction to obtain a lock on every object before the beginning of a operation transaction may unlock the data item and then when needed an execution it then finishes the write operation pre claiming lock protocol helps to evaluate operation that claiming list required data items which are needed to initiate an execution of the process starvation we have also seen in the deadlock which is in the previous module or previous video starvation is a situation when a transaction needs to wait for a indefinite period of time to acquire a particular lock in re in the resource preemption it has to wait for a resource but in starvation and deadlock or concurrency control techniques it has to wait for a lock there could be several reasons for the starvation those are when waiting scheme for locked items is not properly managed that means waiting scheme is not managed and the lock is not free in case of a resource leak a resource is been leaked the same transaction is selected as a victim repeatedly and the sixth term is deadlock deadlock refers to a specific situation when two or more processes are waiting for each other to release the resource so that the other can execute and there is a particular chain between both the process there is a cycle in the wait graph the next protocol time is two phase locking protocol the two phase locking protocol divides the execution phases into three parts there is a growing phase there is a shrinking phase and then there is a steady phase so when a transaction begins here the lock is attained in a transaction beginning then it grows and then it has a steady phase where it shrink when the lost lock is released and the transaction end so with this graph you can explain the 
two phase locking protocol that when the lock is attained that is one phase and when the lock is released that is a shrinking phase and this is a steady phase while the transaction changes have been made so t begins t ends with respect to time a lock is attained and a lock is released now the other type of protocol for concurrency control is timestamp based protocol that you maintain a particular timestamp algorithm for the execution and to serialize the execution of concurrent transaction for example there are three transactions t1 t2 and t3 suppose t1 entered at the time 10 then t2 entered at the time 20 and t3 similarly entered at the time 30 let us assume that these are minutes at 10 minutes at 20 minutes and at 30 minutes it entered in a particular system priority will be given to transaction one then to transaction two and then similarly to the third transaction the advantages is scheduled are serializable just like 2PL protocol that is two phase locking protocol no waiting of the transaction is done which eliminates the possibility of any deadlock situation the disadvantage is starvation would be there of the same transaction if it gets restarted or continuously aborted now there is next is validation based protocol which is the last concurrency control technique protocol in this phase the validation phase is also known as the optimistic concurrency control technique in the validation phase protocol the transaction is executed in three phases read phase validation phase and the write phase in the read phase in this phase the transaction t is read and executed it is used to read the value of the various data item and store them in a temporary local and then it performs all the right operations on that temporary variable which is local variable without the update in the actual database in the validation phase the temporary variable value will be validated against the actual data and if violates the serializability in the right phase the validation of the transaction is validated and then the temporary results are returned back to the database or the system otherwise the transaction is rolled back so the timestamps are t start for the transaction started ti for the validation transaction validation is read in its read phase and the validation phase and then it gets finished now finish phase in this protocol it is used to determine the timestamp of a particular transaction the time is being noted if the ts of that protocol is the validation of t then the serializability is determined and while executing the overall transaction it ensures a great degree of concurrency and also less number of conflicts does it contain transaction with less number of rollbacks so in this video we have studied about concurrency control techniques what are several keywords for concurrency control what are the problems faced for concurrency and what is the need of concurrency we have studied about the protocols which are required to maintain a concurrency in a database system so that it remains in efficient and durability is also maintained during the concurrent access or by the users in a particular transaction so for more theoretical video portions of dbms we will look into upcoming videos thank you